This is a DOSMAR DS500 point of say terminal that I rescued out of the rain a while ago. I've been letting it sit inside, drying up for a good while now. You can even see me in the screen high. And uh, I think it's time I gave it a try. It's DOSMAR is some Finnish brand. This is obviously an imported unit in the manual. The, this logo says uh, your brand here so I'm not really sure what the real brand is I'm hoping it'll it can be found somewhere it's powered by a 1 gigahertz Celeron M processor probably passively cooled it's got an 80 gigabyte Seagate IDE hard drive and apparently space for another hmm, there's an IDE drive cable going up there hmm and it's got a resistive touch screen uh, 2 by 20 character I think VFT display here and a magnetic card reader it runs on 19 volts but it's on a special connector so I'm not sure how well connect that I'll probably just rip the thing apart and solder an old laptop adapter onto it the data sheet says 90 watts so it'll probably work out fine I really like these compact low power point of sale terminal style computers I'd love to have one as an interface for my HTPC because this thing really isn't too deep at all I mean you can have my hand for reference here it's nowhere near as clumsy as a laptop and you get the screen at a much better angle so let's see what the thing does well it didn't take long to figure out why there was an IDE ribbon cable going up into the screen and it's because uh, this bottom part is just a breakout board and a power supply really it's the computer connects to it with this gigantic higher density ribbon cable and it's a nice solution I suppose the power supply came out really easy and once I got it out it was very easy to figure out why this unit was discarded because there was a dead shot on the input of the, yeah, the power input from the power adapter and uh, upon measuring about three seconds with my milliometer this diode which is a reverse polarity protection diode is broken, it's a dead short I removed that and uh, the short's gone and in the place of a diode I soldered in an old laptop power adapter 19 volts and 90 watts so with a bit of luck this unit will just hook up and run now let's find out Alright, we are hooked up, put back together. So let's plug the cord in and see what happens. It hasn't exploded yet. Let's press the power button. I hear a hard drive spinning up. Beep! Hey! There we go. reflective touch screen well this is certainly promising I wasn't expecting it to be this easy it's even got USB ports up on the front probably just USB 1 though Windows embedded post ready ev evaluation copy. <laughs> this thing mustn't have been. Hey! It's beeping at me. The touchscreen seems to be working pretty good. Somewhat unresponsive, but yeah. I wonder if this thing's ever actually been in use because. 
you, you normally see some really big marks on the touch screen from you know if there's it's been used in a store and if they've got a big keypad here and people are always beeping in the numbers or something there's usually a big mark there but this thing is just a bit dirty hey we've got something on a self-test on the dot matrix display woohoo man this thing is really cool just got to find a use for it I mean it's almost a shame to have this and be HD HTPC because I'm never going to be able to see this you can only angle it this much oh man th this thing is going to be a lot of fun doesn't use too much power either it doesn't doesn't have a fan it's very quiet shame if it's only got IDE though would be nice to show an SSD in there perhaps I'll do um, one of these uh, uh, compact flash card IDE adapters I've actually got a couple of them hmm. let me hook up a keyboard and see what if there's anything on this thing at all walk it seems this unit has been in use after all it's password protected and blank doesn't work admin 1234 and so forth doesn't cut it so I think I'm just gonna take the hard drive hook it up to my, uh, one of my other computers and rip any drivers and uh, stuff like that that I need out of it and then do a fresh install of Windows probably just normal Windows XP because uh, yeah I have no idea where I'd find a copy of Windows Embedded Postready to post 2009 but uh, hmm we'll see Domar Touch POS PC <laughs> made in Taiwan for Dosma Oi Finland and they didn't even bother to fill in the serial number anyhow I couldn't resist taking this thing apart mostly in order to upgrade the RAM, it only has one gig and uh, this is what it looks like there's something peculiar about it and that is this slot here right by the, you can see the real tech crab there the Ethernet controller and I wonder if this isn't a remote management card slot so that you can use the Ethernet port to access the BIOS and other text mode stuff but it doesn't have any card installed hmm wish it had would be great fun to mess around with it has two big heat sinks one's probably the North Bridge, the others the CPU, the whopping one gigahertz Celeron CPU, and it has some odd text there. One two three, one two Dolphin, no one two Banias and two three Dolphin, and those are code names for Intel Pentium M processors and the jumper seems to be set to 2.3 so it might have a Dauphin based CPU in it and that's a great news because Dauphins are considerably faster than Banias, Banias, however you want to say it so this thing despite being a 1 GHz unit might actually have a reasonable amount of power behind it. The CMOS battery is all good. And what do we have? One gig DDR333 quality caps all round. This is a really good quality motherboard, at least for something that they didn't even bother to print the serial number on. The big ribbon cable is attached down there somewhere it's kind of hard to see and it also has some odd expansion connector going on there hmm wonder what that is 
it's a secondary IDE channel or something, but it looks way too small for it. Floppy perhaps. What else? Inverter. Standard. 2 CFL. CCFL. No, CFL. Inverter. This odd mini power cable running down there to the power supply thing. Yeah, there's not a whole lot more to it. I'm gonna slap 2 gigs of RAM in it and install Windows XP on it. It actually can boot from USB, which is a major relief. I'll try with my U bootable USB key here just to see a bit more about the machine, but. Yeah, we'll get to know in time once we get proper windows installed on it. This all seems to work quite nicely. It was a real breeze to set up actually because I didn't even have to take the hard drive out to get at the drivers and stuff because they were all there on the website for the manufacturer of the thing or well the importer anyhow you got everything in a single zip drive graphics drivers drivers for the VFD touch screen drivers everything in one package it was a fantastic experience I wish Stuff like uh, laptop manufacturers, cough Acer, would uh, get on the same track because, wow, I, <laughs> I'm not used to getting spoiled in such a manner. Sure, they weren't all, all up to date, some of the drivers are quite old, but I doubt there have been many new drivers even released for it. As for the hardware in it, it's as I expected a Dauphin based. Celeron processor in it at 1 gigahertz and an obviously wrong core voltage reading because this is a 5.5 watt processor the so called ULV model, I don't think it's running at 3.5 volts and uh, while the L2 cache reading is also incorrect, it's got 512k of L2 cache it's actually fairly quick for what it is I mean you can easily move windows around there's no real lag when you're doing anything with it I mean this is yeah about as snappy as you can expect in a computer running Windows XP to be uh, what else can we find here what we've got yeah it doesn't read the cache right there motherboard i852 i855 based, pretty much a laptop motherboard old laptop motherboard, I put 2 gigs of DDR in it, but uh, it doesn't seem to be able to run it at full speed, it is DDR400 but it's stuck at DDR266 although with the process of this slow I don't doubt it matters yeah it's a Kingston kit uh, nothing too exciting here at all really it's got a generic 80 gig hard drive integrated Intel graphics although it does have this fantastic <laughs> VIA sound chip would you look at how gaudy that control panel is I mean come on this is terrible and you press the power button to get rid of it gonna have to do a performance test on this chip just for kicks I don't expect it to perform very well, not very well at all. But since the, the motherboard seems to be of good quality, perhaps they implemented it right. And the thing actually has a, an, a single integrated speaker right here. So that's always something. There we go, even got ACO working on it. So let's see what it will do. Well, it's certainly putting out. One and a half volts. At 
point oh one seven or so percent distortion. Well, I've seen worse sound cards. That's actually not too bad at all. Yeah, all right. My my initial optimism was uh, somewhat malplaced. As soon as you get out of like a hundred to ten k, it yeah, it doesn't perform particularly well when it comes to either distortion or frequency response. But I've seen plenty of worse sound cards that help for what this thing is made to drive this puny little speaker on the side there. I'm still fairly impressed. I mean, this is a usable sound card. I'm not going to have to connect an external sound card just to not get five watts of noise in my ears. Oh yeah, installing updates on Windows XP. This has never been a fun process, has it? And for every year it takes longer and longer, no matter how fast your internet connection is or your computer is. And there we go, all set up. And while this thing holds this a powerhouse, it's definitely going to be useful for something. I actually had a point of sale terminal before, a somewhat older model, and I sold that one. But uh, I've pretty much regretted it ever since, because these things are great fun. I mean. It's a, just such a nice form factor. Small, passively cooled, compact touchscreen computer. And with a bloody VFD on the back to boot. The, this thing. Yeah. Definitely is going to be a lot of fun. I think I'm going to try getting Linux to work on it because. There actually seem to be drivers for the touchscreen for Linux, which, is, which isn't usually the case. Yeah, perhaps we'll see more of this. Until then, cheerio!